Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. Welcome to Rocket Rose Up. And today I'm going to show you how I make a small clock with a Halloween type um, theme. A bit late for Halloween, but it doesn't matter. And um, I'll be showing you how I prepare the decals I use for that and cut them on a Cricut machine. This clock we're going to make today is only small, it's not very big, but I have a special place for it that I think it will look good. It is on a Halloween theme. Um, I don't know why, I just picked Halloween theme because I like it. And um, I am going to show you the full process of making this, so we'll go everything from uh, making the glass face, uh, cutting the decals on the Cricut machine, through to a little bit of enameling at the very end where I'm going to put the numbers on the face. But before I get into this, I must give everybody a very big thank you for your support. The comments and the questions I've been getting lately are fantastic. So uh, that just lets me know that I'm at least doing something right here. Now there is something that I feel a responsibility to let you know and that is is that I have a uh, an affiliate account with the Cricut company and there will be a link in the description below for that and if you do go and buy anything from there that I will receive a small commission for that. The only reason I've done this is that uh, the materials as you will well know are quite expensive and I do need to replace them and being retired it starts getting a little expensive so it's just to help me with that. Anyway, I hope you understand that and let's get into making this clock. Before I get into the design and the materials required, don't forget all the glass I use is Bullseye 90 COE, so you will have to adjust the firing schedule for uh, uh, 96 if you use 96. Um, I full fuse on thin fire paper and I slump with boron nitride. Now this is a design we're going to make. Hopefully this is all going to go fairly easily. Now what I'm going to do is the background for this. I'm going to use this steel blue here, which is a 0146 bullseye. And the reason I'm going to use the steel blue is because the clock movement that I have up here and the hands are red. So I was thinking of using this red over here but red hands will just disappear on that. Then I thought about using this colour and I thought, well, it didn't really relate. So finally I ended up with the steel blue. That'll have a black backing to it and the um, castle and the bats will all be using a black decal paper that I'll be cutting on a Cricut machine. As far as equipment is concerned, you will need something to drill a hole for the um, uh, clock mechanism. I, I use a Cricut machine to cut out the decal paper. You could cut it out by hand if you wanted to, but uh, it's so much easier with the Cricut machine. I'm going to be using also a Taurus ring saw to cut these circles, but again, you could score and snap those circles if you wanted to. As I mentioned before, to cut these circles out I'm going to be using my Taurus ring saw. Um, to prepare this to do that I just need to attach this little lug and you'll see shortly how that comes into play. So I just need to attach this with this uh, double sided tape here. So I'll be putting that on there and that on top. So I'll do that right now. As usual, get my tweezers to get that tape off. And by the way, I did clean the glass and I cleaned this little lug beforehand. I cleaned them with um, alcohol basically. Just make sure that's nice and attached. I'll go over and do the other one and uh, I'll do the black I mean and then we'll take them over and we'll cut them. Before I cut this, a couple of things I need to mention I didn't mention before. Our uh, steel blue is going to be 180 in diameter, that's 180 millimetres. 
and um, the black is going to be 196. So it's a little li larger in diameter and uh, I'll explain that a bit later. Now I have measured out the radius for each one here and I'll be first cutting into that mark there before I then flip it and then do the final cut. Now I'll get uh, all my safety gear on and uh, we'll do this cut. from the disc. Now all I need to do is uh, clean up the discs and assemble them for our first firing. So I've cleaned everything up and assembled it on the kiln shelf. Um, assembly is very easy, just make sure you center the, um, the blue within the black disc. Now we'll get this into uh, the kiln and do a full fuse. Well doesn't that look nice? Nice blue, nice border all the way around it and that's why I had the uh, disc on the bottom larger so it gave the chance for that black to pull in and give us that uh, nice black border and it does that because black uh, melts a lot easier so it'll pull up like that if it was a lighter colour it wouldn't be so good. So that's worked out well it looks like we've got a nice blue colour but it's not as nice as you might think. You see that haze? There's a haze there. Now this is steel blue. And I thought, I don't know whether you know about steel blue, but at lower temperatures, around 760 and that, the end result of steel blue is a steel blue colour. And it has that uh, slight silvery haze like steel. And that's great if that's what you want. But when you get up to higher temperatures, um, that normally goes away. And I have fired steel blue up to about the 8, 805, and it has gone away. But in this case, it hasn't. So I have a problem that I have to now fix. And the only fix I can think of is I need to give that a good, good uh, covering of clear frit and back in the kiln and we'll fire it again and hopefully we'll get rid of that haze which I don't particularly want. In case you haven't seen me do this before I've got a couple of little bits of scrap sitting on the uh, piece of newspaper here. I'll set the plate on those and the reason I do that is so it just makes it easier to lift it off later once I've got the, uh, the frit on it. So now I'll just apply the clear frit, nice even coat. So that's all done. I think I've got a reasonably good coat on there. Um, I'll get this in the kiln and tomorrow morning hopefully we won't have any haze on the steel blue.
So there we have it, it's sort of worked. We've got a nice shiny surface there, which is good. But we do have a little bit of, um, oh, what would you call it, wispy clouds in there, I suppose. It adds a bit of depth, and it does add a little bit to that uh, night sky effect I was trying to achieve. It's, uh, we're good to go now, so I just need to uh, cut out all those decals, and then we'll come back and um, apply them to that before we put it in the kiln. Okay, I'm going to cut the decals now and I'll be doing that on the Cricut machine. Don't forget you can do this by hand if you wanted to. Um, it's just a lot easier with the Cricut machine um, and I will show you that whole process. If you want to give this a go and you'd like the graphic that I'll be using, please just use the email on the um, About tab I believe or go to my website and use the contact form there, let me know and I will send it to you. Once you've got the graphic that I've supplied, or whatever graphic you're going to use, you need to get it into a project in uh, Cricut Design Space. So here you can see I'm in the Cricut Design Space and there is an upload function down on the bottom left here, Upload, um, to upload that graphic. So it's just simple, click on that. And then on here, click on Upload Image. You can drag and drop. I do have it here in a window so I'll just drag and drop that onto there now that's the graphic there just choose a simple image down the bottom right click on continue that'll show you the image it's going to import you don't have to do anything to that there are other options in here but just hit continue again down on the bottom right and then the last thing you it'll ask you whether you're going to print and cut this for us it's just a cut image so click on cut and then hit on upload. Once you've done that, you'll see the graphic displayed here. Then all you need to do is click on that and then insert. And it will insert it into your project. For you, if you're making a bigger clock face, um, you'll need to resize this. For me, I know what size I need this to be, and that is 14 centimeters across. So up on the top uh, toolbar up here, you'll see there's a size option. This is in centimeters. So just change that to 14. And that's pretty much the size that you'll need. I want to double check that it's correct, that I've got the size correct for the clock that I'm making. What I suggest you do is to first of all print the outline of the decals and then check that that will fit as you expect it to be on the clock face. And the way to do that is up in the top left up here in operation, change that to pen and then you can just simply print out the, the outline of each of the cuts it's going to make. From there you go up to the top right and you click on make it. Now you should have your Cricut machine attached and connected and from here it's really just go ahead and print this out. Now if you've used Cricut machine before you're familiar with the process here so it's not too complex. You would have loaded in some paper into your machine and then from there you just hit continue down the bottom down here. select uh, copy paper and then go ahead and uh, print this out. Once you've checked that the size is correct, now we've got to cut out the decals. So hit the finish button down in the bottom right corner. That'll take you back to design space. The first thing we need to do is change that operation up in the top left to a basic cut. Because we're going to cut the decal paper with the face down, we now have to flip the image horizontally so that it will all come out correct after it's cut. To flip that image, it's as simple as go up to the toolbar up here in the middle, you'll see flip. And there's an option in there, flip horizontal, just go flip horizontal and we're ready to cut. Now we can go ahead and cut the decals. So just go to the top right again and hit the make it button. And we don't need to make any changes here. Just hit the continue button down in the bottom right. Now we have to make sure that we select 
light cardstock here because the decal paper is not really paper it's more like a card and our tools will be already loaded which is just a fine point blade and uh, we've loaded the decal paper into the machine so now it's just hit the button there for the cut Now that we've got all the decals cut, I'm ready to apply them to the clock face. Now I've cleaned this, so I've got my water, I've got the decals laid out in roughly the order that I want to put them, and all my tools, tweezers, which I'll need for the very small ones. I'll apply all of the uh, decals, and uh, then I'll show you all of that before it goes in the kiln. I finished applying all the decals and I've left it overnight dry and I've now cleaned up all the glass so now we'll just get it into the kiln and do a decal firing. Not sure what you think about this, I'm quite happy with that, the decals have fused on well. There's good contrast between the decals and the sky. So I'm quite happy with that. Now the next thing I've got to do is put on some hour numbers. And um, they will, I'll be doing that with enamel. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't do that with decals or enamel in the last firing. As far as enamel is concerned on the bottom here. If I try to put enamel over that decal... Um, and it, my experience is, is that the enamel distorts, it doesn't adhere properly. Um, and when it comes to decals, decals on um, decals work, but because the colour on the decal is only very thin, the colour behind it tends to uh, mix. So the red would have ended up quite dark on the bottom here, and um, I'm not quite sure how it would have ended up on the blue. But that's basically why I didn't do it all in one firing. So now we'll see how we go with the enamel. So what I've got here is, I've just got a piece of paper here, which I have marked out into 12 divisions. And I've got small marks here to guide me to where this goes. So all I do is I just take that and I'll position that in between all those guides and orient my uh, clock the way I want it. And I know now that when I do the hour marks and everything, that they'll all be in the right position. So let's give these um, hour markings a go. I've got my uh, red enamel here. Put a little bit up on my very expensive palette. And I do want this to look like it's been hand painted, but I don't want it to look like it's uh, uh, an absolute mess. So anyway, we'll see how we go. So that's all done. I'll let that all dry now and then we'll get it in the kiln.
Well, that's all fused on. We've got our hour marks and uh, the bat size and so forth. All looks pretty good, except that I did stuff up. If you have a look at the... Um, get it there. If you can have a look at the numbers, you see that mottly look? That's because I didn't wait long enough for my enamel to dry properly. Now, if you put an enamel on and you want to get put a good thick coat on, which is what I want to do here, because of the dark colour behind it, uh, make sure you put it on, on in layers and make sure it dries really well before you fire it. But I still like that. I think that gives it a bit of a grungy sort of mysterious look. So now it's just a matter of drilling the hole for the clock mechanism and I have marked up the centre of it there with the texture which should stay on long enough for me to drill the hole. And um, let's get into it. Okay, I had to... Um Redo my marker with a paint pen because the texture come off as soon as I put it in the water. So now, well, let's get into this and wish me luck. Just remember, one of the best ways to drill this hole is to support your drill on an angle until it starts biting into the glass. Once it's biting into the glass, just slowly raise it so it becomes vertical. Keep supporting it. Make sure that it's drilling into the glass well, and then you can take your fingers away and complete the drill. The other thing I need to say too is, um, this is obviously in a container of water, but I have a piece of glass under this, which is a sacrificial piece of glass, so that when it goes through this one, it goes into the one on the bottom and not through the bottom of my tray here, and um, that helps uh, minimise the amount of chipping on the back of it as well. Well, I've made a little bit of a mistake. When I checked that I had all the materials that I needed, I didn't check my mechanism properly. This one is made for a thinner... Uh, clock face in this one so this shaft is not going to come through enough for me to put everything on properly but it is uh, it is long enough to get it through to show you the process so the normal process is that's your hanger you would normally put a rubber washer on that I'll leave it off just for this exercise go through your face um, you would then put a brass washer on then a nut. My fingers make it harder. So nut, which we just finger tighten. Then we got our um, our hand. It goes on next. Then our second hand. Uh, sorry, minute hand. Is on and then we put a little nut for that, very little nut. Tip. And then we put on our second hand. Make sure that the second hand is nice and straight. And that just pushes onto a shaft. And that's it. Well, it's a great subject. I enjoy doing uh, theme plates and theme clocks and all that sort of thing. Um, I think if I did that one again, I would add a little bit to it. I would probably use frit or maybe enamel and add a like a glow on the horizon and maybe around the castle 
think that would be a good addition. Tell me in the comments um, if you like to see clocks and if you'd like to see more clocks because um, um, I do do them occasionally and uh, I do enjoy them. They're, uh, you can be you know, fairly creative with that. I say that word a lot, don't I? There's something that I'm thinking of adding to uh, my videos and that is um, a response to, at the end of the video, a response to um, a question that I've received during the week on anything really. And if I think I can cover it uh, briefly at the end, I'll do that for you as well. Now the thing that you're all probably waiting for is the results of that video last week where I asked for your opinion on some projects. Now I must thank everybody for replying to that. It uh, made it a lot easier for me to uh, make some decisions. Now the end result is this. The strip construction and the one with the decal are pretty much neck and neck. That means that um, they'll be the first ones up. The strip construction will take a little while to do because of all the work. So that probably won't be the next video. The um, decal one will probably be the next video. Though I do have one that I'm thinking of that's a bit arty. Anyway, we'll find out about that. Next comes the trinket dishes. Uh, surprised me a little bit, but um, yeah, that's that's. I like trinket dishes, but uh, yeah, that'll be the next one. And then we'll have that little transparent bowl that's made out of all transparent glass. And finally, will be the ones that uh, where um, opposites repel, which is a little surprising that that was last. But um, I, I like that one, but maybe it's too simple. Anyway, that's the end results of all that. Now, don't uh, forget to uh, give me all your comments in the comments section, any questions you like. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you're going to subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notifications. And if you want to see a couple more videos right now, up there as usual, subscribe button right there. And until the next one, I'll say bye for now.